Hey guys, it's Jane. Welcome back to the Book and Beverage Review, where today we will be reviewing a novel by Andrew J. Harvey. It is the second installment in his Clemhorn series. So this is a book about a family of world leaders who are able to travel in time with the use of portals. And it's very militaristic. There's a lot of battle sequences and it's kind of their struggle to maintain order in a society that has a lot of moving parts to it along with the time travel element. Super interesting. So what I thought we would do, we will also review this Black Rifle Coffee Company Espresso with Cream because it's made, it's a veteran owned company and I thought it kind of went with the militaristic theme of the video today. So without further ado, let's sip some coffee and get into our story. So I have tried one of these before and the thing is they have 200 milligrams of caffeine. If you guys remember, I tried the Death Wish coffee and I knew that it was going to make my heart race too much if I drank too much. It was because when I had drank this espresso with cream, it was a bit much. So we're just going to... This is a good coffee. I always really like this company. I would like to try some different stuff from them at some point, but I just really enjoy this over some ice at any point of the day, but I could never drink a whole can. So there's still some left in there. So as I sip through the video, I'm not overdoing it, just so you know. Now let's get into our story. I thought this was super interesting. This is not my cup of tea. I was reached out by a PR company to review this and I didn't know what to expect going in. I had read some of the um some of the synopsis of it and I was like, "Okay, interesting." But I for some reason it just kind of slipped by me that it was like a time traveling sort of uh story. So what happened was is it took me about like the first 30 pages to understand what was going on. I unfortunately hadn't read the first in the series. I wanted to. I just had some issues downloading the copy that was um available to me. So I just kind of jumped into the second installment and I really enjoyed it. This was beautifully written. I put that out there in the beginning because for me, I always keep track of new words I find and I'll write them down in my notebook. I keep a notebook of new words I come across and I know Joke had come across around 50 new words that I hadn't seen anywhere before. So that was a first for me to have a novel with so many words, in exception to maybe like The Hunchback of Notre Dame, partly because this was all militaristic lingo and I found it to be, um, I'm sure that there are plenty of novels that are sci-fi and have that element in there, but for me, it's my first exposure to something like this. So I was super impressed off the bat. And as the novel progressed, I did find the love stories to be very endearing, but they don't don't take center stage. The center stage and most of the novel does surround battle sequences, um, testing out gear, um, sort of reconnaissance, and some uh, some personal backstories that are coming in and fading in and out throughout it. And despite all that, I was not bored. I'm usually like a magic lover or um, a love story lover, and I was not bored. I found it very interesting. I found it very well paced. And as for what it is, this is a really good novel. I actually don't have any real cons to it because it is what it is it is in its own nature i usually like to give a little bit of like hey the author could have done this differently but i can tell by this author this author um andrew harvey could have written anything he wanted to to write and it could have been interesting he just wanted to write something that seemed to have a lot of this sort of conspiracy um what it's like to be in the ranks of these characters who are essentially the children of the world leader and at some point there's also a lot of sibling rivalry and they're battling each other so it's interesting to see the world from different perspectives it's also really interesting to see their leadership styles because some of them seem to be a little bit more laid back it's uh there was a scene where one of the kids well he's not a kid he's not like an adult but it was interesting to see one of the characters 
have to give the orders to have a execution and they were begrudging it you could tell that they had issue with it as opposed to whereas one of the other kids would have no problem with it at all so i mean that sort of thing it was interesting to see that sort of psychology about where they're coming from what their interests are and overall i just found some of these um some of these visuals to be really appealing there was a lot of land, air, and sea travel, so you got to see many landscapes. And I think the author did a good job in putting you to into the atmosphere of the characters, being that time and also different location of the Earth. These characters can be in vastly different regions. I didn't feel like confused about where they were. And I think a lot of that is owed to the fact because the author was able to put us where um, to, to give us an idea of the temperature or the things that they were seeing and the places that they were going and the characters they were encountering. So yeah, I thought this was really fun. I would really enjoy reading the first one and I can't wait till the last installment of the trilogy comes out. If you are someone who likes a lot of um, battle sequences, if you're someone who likes a lot of conspiracy, a lot of the psychology that goes behind ruling a um, run a military uh, faction, I think that this was right for you. I feel like this is something that you're going to really enjoy. This coffee has a freaking ton of caffeine yet it's really good. I feel like this novel was super realistic in a lot of ways. I didn't really find any plot holes, and I'm a big stickler on that. I can find a plot hole even if it's been looked through by 70 editors, and maybe it's just because there's so many moving parts that anything can happen. I didn't really find any plot holes, so I definitely recommend this to the right person because you don't want to pick it up and, and be something like a romance reader and end up here, even though there is some romance in here. So, um, yeah. I did enjoy the characters. I my favorite was probably the the uh Arnold, which is also a child of the the world leader. So I mean, I didn't know anything about this world coming into it. So everything was really discovery for me. And that being said, I was still able to enjoy the novel. So that says a lot too about how how um how interesting these characters do seem to play out. I give this novel four stars, and I definitely recommend picking it up. Clamhorn Nadir. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. As for the coffee, so it's hard because this is not for me. For the right person, this is perfect. I'd say it would be a four star for the right person. But because I feel like it's so unhealthy, I would normally give this like a four star. Anything that I feel that's extremely unhealthy on the channel, I will knock off a star because of it. And I feel that that much caffeine is super unhealthy. So I'm going to give it three stars. Um, but maybe people have different tolerances of caffeine. For me, it's just not something that I pick up very often. It's if I'm having a really late night reading thing going on. Uh, but yeah, I think that this has still got a great taste to it. It's definitely got a kick to it. And I really like that it's veteran founded. I support, uh, I support veteran owned companies. So a special thank you to the people at Henry ROI PR company for reaching out to me and giving me the chance to review this book. I really enjoyed it. And of course, to Andrew Harvey for allowing it as well. So Thank you guys. I look forward to getting into a new story and sipping a coffee with you soon. Take care.